The Chargers have an entirely new regime. And with a new GM and head coach comes a new philosophy. And we're gonna see this team be run very differently than it has been run in recent years, like under Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco. I'm sorry for bringing up bad memories so early on in the video. But I think one of the biggest differences that we are going to see is the rookies and the younger players having a bigger impact on the roster than they have previously. Let me give you guys the full breakdown on why I'm expecting a lot of first year guys to play a big role on this team. So first of all, I wanna talk about the rookie mini camp in OTAs because Jim Harbaugh has spoken very highly of the players on this team, specifically talking about their work ethic and willingness to get better. That high praise extends to the rookies. And here's what he had to say at the first day of uh, rookie mini camp. They were really prepared. I mean, they've done a lot of, a lot of work as good as you know, any first day you could you could hope for and, and farther ahead than what I was hoping for. More of like a, it's more like a plane to me taking off of a runway. I mean, it starts at a dead stop and then it it builds speed, builds speed, builds speed, builds speed, and then it going so fast it just has to has to lift off of, of the air. That was that's what we were doing today, getting the guys getting the guys acclimated. So the rookies, they did a nice job of getting acclimated to the NFL so far. And what Jim Harbaugh is trying to do is get them up to speed so that once they get their first NFL action, you know, the game speed, it's not going to be too much for them. And they can play fast and can play freely the way that they did when they were in college. And that's a big rookie hurdle, honestly, is transitioning to the NFL speed. We hear that a lot. It's a big thing to get through. And that's part of the reason that Jim Harbaugh has brought the rookies in for training camp an entire week before bringing in the veterans. And by the way, rookie mini are up. Uh, rookie training camp starts next week. We are so freaking close to training camp. But Jim Harbaugh, he's bringing those guys in early because he wants to build up as much momentum and coach those guys up as much as he possibly can so that that barrier to entry to get NFL, or like get up to NFL speed and see NFL playing time, it's gonna be a lot less and he's gonna be able to maximize those guys on the roster. And just the fact that he is emphasizing that part of the roster, you know, the rookies, that is a great sign to me because it tells me that he expects a lot of the rookies to see some pretty good playing time or at least that he is wanting them to be prepared just in case they do have to see some playing time and like let's just go through the chargers draft class right now joe alt he's gonna come in and he's gonna start right away at the right tackle spot so he's gonna be a day one starter as a rookie but then you go down like lad mcconkey He's heavily in the mix at wide receiver. Some people even expect him to be the wide receiver one for Justin Herbert and maybe like the most productive wide receiver on this team immediately. And he does, he has the potential to do that. And then it's Junior Colson who is in the linebacker rotation for sure. We just don't know how much action he's gonna get yet and whether he's gonna start or not, but he knows this Jesse Mentor playbook and has been a leader at Michigan as well as at rookie minicamp. So I honestly expect him to not only start, but like kind of hit the ground running because he has experience in this scheme. Remember, he got playing time immediately at Michigan as well as a true freshman, which is a very tough thing to do. So Jim Harbaugh, he wasn't shy about getting Junior on the field early. And I don't think he's going to be shy about it in the NFL either. So I'd expect Junior Colson to start. And depending how he plays, he could probably be the linebacker that gets the most snaps on this team next year. But then you keep going down this draft class and the guys in the later rounds, like on day three, Justin Aboigby in the fourth round, he's going to be in that defensive line rotation pretty heavily, I think, because there's not going to be a lot of guys able to compete for some pretty good playing time on that defensive line right now, but also because he might just come in and be the best run stuffer on this team instantly, and he needs to develop in the pass rush side of his game, but he's going to be able to see the field on those early downs, first and second down where teams want to run the ball, and he probably is going to have upwards of like 200 snaps this year remember this is a guy drafted in day three tar heap still another guy drafted on day three in the fifth round he's been impressing in uh otas and minicamp so far feels to me honestly like he's probably going to be starting at that nickel cornerback spot and then the other cornerback we drafted cam hart 
Haven't really heard his name much, but he's going to be able to get some snaps in that uh, cornerback rotation at times. Certainly not as much as the other guys that I mentioned already in this draft class. But, you know, if there's an injury to Christian Fulton, which he has been injured a lot, Cam Hart, he could step in and play a lot of those snaps that Christian Fulton is missing. Or even if he just plays really well in training camp, then, you know, he could even just play over Christian Fulton. We just really haven't heard much about Cam Hart so far. But that's a guy who's got a very, very high ceiling. He just himself has struggled with injuries. So we'll see what happens with him. Then we go to the sixth round. Kamani Vidal is definitely going to be heavily involved in this running back rotation. Even if Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins knock on wood, even if they have a fully healthy season, which I'm not totally confident that they will. And if one of them does go down, then the Chargers, they're going to lean on Kamani Vidal even more like Kamani is a true three down running back that can do everything and I expect him to be getting the bulk of the load after proving himself on the field probably about like halfway through the season Brendan Rice and Cornelius Johnson those guys are more of question marks the two wide receivers were drafted in the, in the seventh round but I definitely expect one of these guys to make the roster do, just don't know exactly who it is yet I would prefer Brendan Rice, I think, but I think either way, the bulk of their action, if they do see a lot of uh, NFL snaps, it would be on special teams. So I wouldn't really expect either of these guys to see a ton of offensive snaps, but I have not even talked about the undrafted free agents yet that I could possibly see have some playing time as well. Because some of these guys could like have a legitimate impact in their first year. I look at a guy like Zach Hines, the tight end from South Dakota State. He could be out there as tight end three or tight end four. And in this Greg Roman offense that that could be like a hundred snaps or more because of how much he utilizes those tight end sets. Hopefully we're going to see more wide receiver sets. We just don't know how this offense is going to look again because there are so many question marks in terms of like formations and play calling because there are so many guys in that offensive coaching staff like Greg Roman, Mark Tressman, Marcus Brady, tons of guys from different philosophies. Jim Harbaugh is going to be at the head of it all. So we know we're going to be running the ball a lot. Zach Hines is a very good blocking tight end. Just like Will Disley, Zach Hines probably could be the second best blocking tight end on this roster as an undrafted free agent because of his size and also because of just the tape that he put up in college. And then remember, I talked about that D-line room. There's not a lot of really good guys in there right now. Michael Mason from Coastal Carolina, I think he could come in and impress in training camp. Watch him against UCLA if you can. He was very impressive in the pass rush and so showed some good ability to stack and shed in the run game. He's a three-tech defensive lineman, but I think he could really surprise some people in training camp. Once those pads get on, everything changes. He could see some time on the field in his rookie season. And then those other guys that I've already talked about that you guys know I'm high on, Thomas Harper, Robert Kennedy, Akeem Dent, all the undrafted free agents in that uh, DB room. I think any single one of those guys could earn some playing time. And Jim Harbaugh, he's going to give all of those guys the opportunity to see the field if they earn that playing time in practice. That is the whole idea here. And I know it might sound crazy to some of you guys that I'm just naming off like it seems like almost every undrafted free agent that we got. I'm not doing that, I promise you. But I think all these guys that I'm mentioning could get on the field a lot as rookies, but this coaching staff is going to be much better at developing guys and at the rate at which they develop, it's just going to be a lot quicker. Chargers, they already have a great history of undrafted free agents like Malcolm Floyd, Antonio Gates, Austin Eckler. He's the most recent one that we all know about. And these UDFAs, like usually they're not coming from a great coaching staff so they might just get into this Chargers team under the Jim Harbaugh coaching staff and have like a football awakening like oh my gosh my third eye has opened and it suddenly clicks for them and they just become really good football players if you want to hear more about some of these undrafted free agents you can click this video right here this is every defensive undrafted free agent